Hello. So the point of this video series, as it always has been, is three parts. <clears throat> to get some exercise and give you something to listen to while you're exercising, if you're doing that with me. Because it's only about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. The second point is to share some of my ideas and beliefs of the world, maybe connect with people who do share some of those philosophies. I don't expect for us to be, you know, equal or the same or have the same views on every belief um, or idea. That's part of what makes life unique is meeting people who disagree with you and have their perspective on why they disagree with you. I just don't want to get into arguments with people because arguments never almost never resolve any issues. They usually lead to more separation, more negativity between the individuals, and I prefer not to be negative with people. At the end of the day, if I vote for Trump and you vote for Hillary, I don't think that makes you a worse person than me. I think we have, I genuinely think people who believe in a different way than I do, in most cases, really want the same things as I do, they just have a different belief about how we go about getting there. So I accept that. The third part is consistency for me, because, excuse me, as an artist, um, if you want to call it that, I, I usually don't use the term artist in that capacity because I almost feel like that's saying I'm different from other people than my group of performers and painters and all that, that we're in a different level or psychology from other people. And I don't necessarily know that that's the case. Um, and unfortunately right now, which side of the brain is more patterned and which one is more erratic escapes me. But one side of your brain, of our brains tends to be more creative, and the other one tends to be more practical. And I would definitely say I lean more towards the creative because I'm not as organized as I could be, and that's part of the reason I want to do this series of videos is because I feel like it creates a consistency in me. It develops a pattern and a practical application that I don't normally uh, use, and I think that's really beneficial to not only me as uh, an everyday person, but also as an actor and a uh, producer, filmmaker type person. <laughs> and so with that said, sometimes my topics will be off the beaten path. Sometimes they will be in line. Um, I'll have ideas. Sometimes they'll just be randomized thinking. Here, I gotta adjust the screen here. I'm going a little bit like a turtle right now. So, this weekend has been sort of an interesting educational weekend for me, uh, which I really like. My brother's birthday was this weekend. Um, he just turned 42. A really wonderful guy named Ken. Uh, my really wonderful mom. And they live about 200 miles away from me. And with the nature of my investments in um, my two different businesses, I don't have the ability to travel to see them uh, because my funds are pretty much dispersed. And I also have two puppies. Uh, they're not puppies anymore, but they'll always be puppies to me, Amadeus and Simba. And so it's hard to lodge them financially and then travel to Austin where they live. So I don't get to see them as often as I would like. And uh, they've come to visit once, but they're, my mom has a certain amount of mobility challenges. Uh, and my bathtub here happens to be a very high sided tub a high walled tub, so it's hard for her to step over it. So, 
We're going to see if we can work on that so they can come down and visit because I would love for them to be closer to me than they are. Um, I just can't do much for them or be with them when they're so far away. The um, thing that was educational this weekend for me was I was uh, looking into Sony Vegas because they use it as an editing software. And in the last, oh gosh, I want to say the last three months, because I was off computers for a while, one of my computers dropped dead. Um, happened to be at Best Buy, which I used to have a very negative opinion of Best Buy. I still think they're overpriced in certain things, but um, they do have some positive services that I am now utilizing. And one was when I bought my new computer from them, I could get this program where they would clean off viruses and such off other computers. So they cleaned off other computers I had. Um, one that I haven't used in probably, oh gosh, five years, maybe? Maybe three or four, three or four years. And so they got that working again, which is awesome. And now uh, I'm using that at my office. And uh, when my computer died three months ago, that I was using primarily, I uh, had to start reinstalling stuff when I got the new computers up, uh, new and old, new and older computer back up. I had to start reinstalling software, and one of them was Sony Vegas. And <clears throat> I've been trying over the last couple of months to get back into making videos and I always kind of found hurdles and I'll get to some back to Sony Vegas in a bit but so on this phone my iPhone 6 plus I would use to record videos I used to on my iPhone 5 and my home elliptical I'm on a treadmill now but on my home elliptical I would film the uh, the original cardio vlogs that I used to film on that machine, and um, so I would film the original cardio vlogs on my old home elliptical, and uh, I would upload them to YouTube. But I was never giving getting as great a quality as I wanted. And um, on my iPhone 6 Plus, it's all 1080p now. I'm not on the 6S because the 6S is uh, 4K. But I was noticing when I was uploading to YouTube and I was trying to download them back to my computer, either using Real Player or using um, or using this secondary sort of YouTube suggested site. I would discover that no matter what, they would all come down to 720p. And so, that was a little bit of annoying to me because I knew I was recording them in 1080. I was using the back facing, I'm using the front facing right now. So obviously it's gonna be 720p. But that doesn't change the fact that in the upload, uh, YouTube is re-encrypting it into a smaller format with the same, they're compressing the video in order to make it to where they have more space on their servers and all that sort of stuff like that. Even though they're still maintaining 720p, what happens is it's 720p kind of based on the screen that you're looking at it on. So I didn't know how to resolve that problem. And my iPhone, when I would go into camera after recording it and go into the video viewer and try and upload it from to YouTube, the first thing that was happening is it would never let me utilize the HD feature to upload. And I was going, why are you not letting me do that? Well, I danced with Apple support online uh, or on the phone. They sent me to uh, the Apple store close to where I live uh, and with this gentleman named Thomas kind of went through the process of trying to figure out what was going on and ultimately we discovered 
that through the camera app, you cannot upload um, things to dance. Sorry if I'm moving off screen, I'm kind of not focusing so time. Through the camera app, we discovered you cannot upload HD videos. You have to go through the photo app to upload them. So that's just a little FYI in case you're trying to do that. Go to the photo app to upload your HD videos because it will not let you select it as an option through the camera app. So keep that in mind. Now, I say all this because when I was using the back facing camera to record video at 1080p, e even when I did get to upload through the camera app or through the photo app, when I did get it to upload to YouTube, when I was downloading it, a video that is 612 megabytes, which is not as high resolution as you would imagine, but higher than what I was getting on YouTube, the, the 612 megabyte video was being compressed down to not, not 1080, but 720 at a rate of, uh, or with a uh, megabyte size of, I want to say a little less than one, a little less than one twelfth of its original size, so around 43, 44 megabytes, which is a huge compression on top of the fact that it's already compressed in the first place when it's created within the phone. So <clears throat> I never realized this thing that dances so much <laughs> on the treadmill. Sorry about the little dancing back and forth. I really have no control over it. <clears throat> Might have to find some kind of a rubber thing or something to keep it in place. Anyways, so that said, um, I use Real Player because my brothers downloaded videos with Real Player, but I was getting the same results even with the high detail uh, selection within the preferences for recording. I was getting the same result from that that I was getting from the online YouTube suggested um, downloader. So I began looking at things like Dropbox because then you were photo app or your camera app, there's an option to upload it to different methods, Vimeo, whatever else. So I thought, let me look at Dropbox. Well, when, I was, when I was looking at Dropbox's app, it had a pretty poor rating, or not poor, mediocre rating. We're at about um, three stars with like a hundred and some odd reviews. The next one down was one called Shoebox, which I've never heard of, but it had 4.5 stars out of like 90 people reviewing it. And then below that one, I discovered Google Drive. So I was like, okay, Google Drive. I have a lot of emails on Google. I use Google quite a bit. Let me try Google Drive. So I uploaded it to Google Drive. Didn't know really if it took finally got into Google Drive on the computer and found the video and discovered that ta -da, it was back in its original recording format of 612 megabytes or not format but original recording of 612 megabytes space size and it's in an MOV format so that being said I was able to download it to my computer and then after dancing with Sony Vegas because I needed the latest QuickTime 7.7 .7 something uh, version, I was able to, able to import the video into my timeline on Sony Vegas so I can edit it. So yay! Now the challenge I'm facing is on my previous computer, before it crashed, I had a an editing software or an audio editor, audio editor called Audacity. However, it does not exist for some reason in my most recent download, so I have to regain Audacity 
which is actually a pretty basic but a pretty effective recording or uh, audio editor because it does siphon a lot of background noise. And the challenge that I've been facing with iPhone videos is even when I'm in a quiet room, I don't, I don't think it's the air conditioner. I guess it could be. It must be the air conditioner. Now that I sort of process that into my brain, but even when everything else is conceivably quiet around me, and I don't hear anything super noticeable. The camera is picking up something super, super noticeable, uh, audio-wise, and it couldn't be more than the phone, the camera, as I'm talking about, couldn't be more than six feet away from me at tops. But you can still hear my voice, but there's definitely a background noise. So I'm trying to get audacity so I can improve the quality of the audio uh, that I am able to put out there. The same would apply to this video. Uh, even though I'm recording it right now, I will most likely uh, send it up to Google Drive, process it out to uh, download it out to my, to my computer, take it into Sony Vegas, audio edit um, the sound to hopefully improve the quality so it's not you don't hear like this hum maybe of the treadmill in the background or whatever else it loves to dance sorry sometimes like I said I don't look at it and I kind of screw you over a little bit I'm sorry about that anyways so I'm hoping that that will allow me to upload videos with a little stronger of an audio uh, track for you to listen to because I know how significant audio is in the process. So those are kinds of some educational things I've learned over the weekend, especially if you're someone who's making videos and trying to edit videos. I should mention in Audacity, uh, what, what I do is <clears throat> there's a thing where you can highlight. You're, you're supposed to sort of highlight a certain section of the audio that is pretty much clear and that you don't have any dialogue going over because if you if you have words or you're, sp you're speaking during that time it has trouble separating the audio in the background so what you're supposed to do is sort of isolate that audio that little the little moment what's called like sort of ambient noise that we call it in a film and you either try to decrease it or match it so it's consistent throughout the audio track so it's not sort of a, this odd sort of a find or noise that you hear off and on but you don't know where it's coming from. So when you get into Audacity, if you are using Sony Vegas, you're supposed to open the audio track, right click on the audio track, go up to open in audio editor. You're going to have to select one in preferences which is under options and audio. Select an audio editor, if you get Audacity or whatever else. Go in, find an ambient noise moment, highlight that ambient noise moment, process the noise reduction to it, see how it sounds once the noise reduction is removed, uh, the noise reduction process is done. Then select all and apply that noise reduction again. And conceivably it should remove a lot of that hiss or whatever the noises you have in the background. If it's fairly basic, <clears throat> everything works on frequencies and certain frequencies cannot be removed for whatever reason because of the quality of the audio editor or uh, other areas which I or other elements at which I'm not educated enough to know about at the moment. So it's a little education for you as I got education myself over the weekend and uh, thanks so much for watching really appreciate it this was a little bit shorter because I just finished around a 20 minute walk you joining me and uh, thanks so much for watching and have a wonderful day and live with passion going like a turtle
Slow, 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 like the turtle.